Hi, my name is Greg Harmon, and I'm one of the developers of FPP. And I wanted to show you how I could use Visual Studio Code to do some remote editing and some remote development on a Raspberry Pi 3. So what this gives me is a very nice uh, editor with Visual Studio Code with a lot of plug-in kind of capability. Uh, plus, but I can still do the development and the testing on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I should point out that this does technically work for BeagleBone Blacks, um, although because I have, well, although I have had a number of problems with those, just simply because of the amount of memory that's required. This will temporarily install while we're doing some editing, some software, and some processes that run in addition to FPP. And uh, because of the low memory on the BeagleBone Black, it does sometimes crash and cause problems. But I do this all the time for Raspberry Pi 3s and 4s, and uh, it works really well. So let me show you how to set it up. Um, the first things that we need to do is actually make a couple changes to our configuration on our uh, FPP system. They're very easy to do, so uh, what we could do is come down to the, uh, the shell from the menu, and when this pops up, I'm just going to log in as FPP and Falcon, right? And the first challenge that we have is that all of the files, whoops, are owned by root. And I don't want to change that. So what I would need to be able to do is to log in as root via SSH into this development Pi that I have. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to set the root password so that I know it. So sudo and then passwd and root. And then it's going to prompt me. And I am going to set a password that is not Falcon, but something that I know. That is the first thing that we did, but still we also need to change one configuration file in the SSH directory. So Etsy SSH, right? And uh, it's this can file right here, the SSHD configuration file, right there it is. So what I wanna do is I'm going to, you can use the editor of your choice. I'm going to use VI to do it. And what we'll be able to see is, uh, you'll see that right here, by default, what it looks like is, is this, is uh, when you start up one of these, it will have a permit root login, but it prohibits password. So what I do is I just, comment out that line and I duplicate it and I just put the word yes here. And again, if you're if you're used to using SSH keys, then you can just put it in the authorized host and you don't have to do this, but I thought this was the simplest process for new users. So now that I've set that, what I need to do is I also need to restart the SSHD service. So I can do sudo service sshd and restart and now our pi is configured and ready to go so i can close that session and be back here to uh, our website all right so now let's go back to visual studio code uh, after you've got it installed and ready to go and boot it up it should look something like this um, what i do need to do is install an extension i need to install the remote ssh extension so if I go ahead and just search for the word remote, we'll see it showed up. There's a bunch of these together. The one that we want is the one that's called remote SSH. You can see that I already have it installed. Um, but if I needed to install it, it would look just like this. So like when I click on remote containers, we see that there's an install button. That's all you have to do for remote SSH is just click that install button. It'll take a minute to kind of download this plugin locally to your PC. Uh, and then it'll ask you to restart a uh, Visual Studio Code. I think you do have to have OpenSSH uh, installed on this, but I believe that if I remember correctly, it'll prompt you for that uh, as you're doing it. So very easy. And uh, so after I've installed it and restarted, I'll get this little green uh, button down here, icon down here, that when I click on it, shows me all of the remote capabilities. 
Uh, I do have a couple different plugins installed, but Remote SSH is the one we're using, and we want to connect to our uh, Raspberry Pi for development. So I just selected a remote host, and you can see that I have some set up, but not the one that I want to access. The one that I access, one I wish to access is new. So I'm going to set a new SSH host. And when we do this, we need to set who we're going to run and log in as. So we want to log in as root. And then if we happen to know the IP, we, if we know the IP address, that's what most people will do, you would type the IP address in. My box happens to have a host name on our device. So I'm just going to type, uh, uh, oops, make sure I get this right. FPP test, that is the name of our box here. So I'm going to log into root as FPP test, but just remember that for most people, you would probably put in the IP address instead of FPP test. So when I select that, it asks me where I want to save it. You'll probably just have one configuration. I have two. I would suggest using the default one if you do have multiple. And then we can see down here that it's added that configuration. So I could just go ahead and click next. Um, but because that button won't always be there, I just want to show you how to do it. Uh, is that if we click right here on this little green icon again, and we come to connect host, we should see our host right here, FPP test. So I will go ahead and click on this. And what you can see it does is it opens up a new window and it asks me for that password that we just set up. So I will type that password in and now we can see what it's doing is it's downloading the uh, server side plugin uh, onto um, uh, our Raspberry Pi. This runs in Node.js and it takes just a minute or so to install. And this is a piece that does require a little bit of memory on the Pi, but it works completely fine. There we go. So now that it's installed and I can see here that now on this window, it says uh, that I have SSH on FPP test and my base window, um, it doesn't show anything. So this one is actually Visual Studio Code running as if it was my laptop, but it's really doing the connections on the FPP test device. So when I select open folder, what I want is I want to put the location of our FPP code, and I just type opt FPP, and you can see that it's even showing my files, but because I want the folder slash opt FPP, and hit show. Now we can see that what it's doing, and it prompted me for the password one more time, which is fine. It'll stop doing that after a while. And yes, I trust the FPP developers, so that's okay. And now what I can see, and maybe I'll make this just a little bit bigger here, is I have a great editor for editing the files. So for example, if I want to maybe do some testing and update uh, this file, I see it right here. But I also have, um, if I'm doing some development for, you know, the, uh, for the C code, I also have shell capabilities. So if I come in and look at terminal and uh, there we go, a new terminal shows up. You can see here that right here I have, and it's just as if I'm logged into the device there. I mean, logged in as root as uh, FPP. And so I could, uh, go down and um, and go into the source code and if I needed to compile something or something else all of my commands are right here I should point out that um, if you there are some extensions that you might want to install so for example now when I go to extensions of this window notice that it shows me two things it shows me my local extensions Plus, it also shows what extensions are installed on for this FPP test instance, and there's none found, right? The cool thing I like about this is that it, it basically shows me, by showing me the local ones, it's very easy for me to say, to kind of have like a master list of ones that I like to install. So you can see that I'm a really bad speller, so I tend to like to have a code inspector install. So I can just click this little button that says install on FPP test, and that will make it available on my test server uh, as well here for my Raspberry Pi. And I can also do the same thing like maybe for a C++ uh, formatter. So I'll just, I tend to use that one here. And there's a lot of other, you know, good plugins that you could use. Um, later on, I hope to show how to use the remote C++ debugging 
plugin with this, um, but you can see that right now it's going through and it's downloading and it is running that pot that plugin on the Pi. All right, so there we go. So now we have uh, all those, both of those installed, and we could get back to uh, active development.